Back in January of this year, the YouTube user known as VenomFangX released a video entitled 9 Reasons Why It's Time for Thunderfoot to Quit. In it, he made the astonishing claim that the Big Bang Theory had been predicted by its description in the Old Testament of his Bible, and not particularly surprisingly, shortly afterwards, Thunderfoot was courteous enough to take the time to tear up his claims and stuff them roughly back up his ass in the 35th installment of his Why Do People Laugh at Creationist series. In that same episode, Thunderfoot challenged Venom, also known as Sean, to produce a single verifiable biblical revelation to scientific knowledge, and sometime later, Sean returned with not one, but two in his video, Thunderfoot Serves Death. There, he claimed that the discovery of ocean currents by Matthew Mori was scripturally inspired and that the aseptic hand-washing techniques developed by Ignaz Semmelweis were in fact first described in the Old Testament. Predictably, Thunderfoot responded to these pungently ambitious claims with Why Do People Laugh at Creationist 36, where he once again helped Sean squeeze them back up where they came from. It was at this point that I decided to put my oar in and produced Holy Hallucinations 19 in order to help mop up the puddles of intellectual vomit and to make a few points of my own. In that video, I made the observation that his earlier assertion that the Bible contained a description of the Big Bang was somewhat at odds with the stance he'd taken on YouTube as a young Earth creationist before his... leave of absence. Let's take a moment to refresh our memories with regards to exactly what I said. Also, I was under the impression that you believed that your world was created in seven days, so I was surprised to see you taking credit for your book predicting an event that happened almost 14 billion years ago. I was unaware that you'd retracted your previous Young Earth stance, and if you haven't, then how do you explain this? You're not lying your fucking face off just to feebly try and win a point rather than conducting an honest debate, are you, Sean? Because that wouldn't be very Christian now, would it? Of course, Sean didn't accept my video response, let alone address any of the points I made or this particularly pertinent question. Over the course of the next few weeks, I also repeated the question directly to him three times in the comments sections of his and other people's videos, but he ignored them all and in some cases deleted them. I'd pretty much given up on getting an answer until I was lucky enough to spend a little time listening to an interview with Sean on the Tuesday afternoon podcast of May 24th of this year. So with what I've just said in mind, I got somewhat excited when I heard the following. Well, let me ask you this. I recall you took a lot of your inspiration from Kent Hovind. Do you still do you still uh, see him as an, as an inspiration, someone you follow, or, or has that changed at all? Have you moved towards the more kind of philosophical aspect of Christianity? I, to this day, I mean, I'm actually going up in a month from now to work with Eric Hovind, uh, in, in Pensacola to, to sort of, I don't know, I, I agree with what his dad did uh, in terms mm -hmm. of the creation versus evolution message. I actually became a Christian watching his videos. So Kent Hovind has a special place in my heart, and I watch his videos to this day. Now, I do know that there have been criticisms leveled against uh, Kent Hovind, both on a, both a personal level as well as uh, regarding some of the information he presents in his seminar. But I think overall, particularly his seminar called Lies in the Textbooks, I agree with the, the vast majority of it. Kinda sounds like he answered the question for me, doesn't it? I think everyone would be hard-pressed after hearing that to argue that Venom's no longer a young Earther, but as if that wasn't enough to get my juices flowing, I almost pissed my pants in delight when I heard this. So, you would still consider yourself a young Earth creationist? Absolutely, yes. So there it is. Question answered, albeit indirectly. Thank you, Sean, and if you're listening to this, I think it's clear now that you yourself didn't believe a word of what you said when you were trying to palm off your Big Bang theory onto the gullible like a sleazy used car salesman. Of course, this leads to a number of new, albeit related, questions that I'd like to pose, and I hope that you'll at least consider them this time, especially in the light of what's left of your rapidly shrinking credibility. Does defending your primitive fairy tales really justify dragging common decency and honesty through the mud, Sean? And what do you think this kind of behavior says about the very beliefs you're purporting to defend, much less why they need to be defended in such an underhanded manner? How far will you go to defend those beliefs, Sean? How big a lie are you willing to tell on their behalf? And what does that speak to their true worth? What would you be willing to do, Sean? Anything? Everything?
These questions deserve an answer, Sean, because you've proven your dishonesty with your own words. And if you want to salvage any semblance of respect outside your own self-affirming circle of fans, you really should consider addressing them. Because I, for one, am left seriously asking myself why anyone, anywhere, should believe a word of what you say about anything.